Hi, forensic students. Uh, this is our how to make a plaster cast lab video. As you go through this video, since it is an Edpuzzle assignment, uh, occasionally the video will pause and you will need to answer some questions before moving on. In part two of this assignment, you're going to have to make your own wet footprint uh, and take a photo of it in order to analyze it for the following day with this plaster cast lab. So I'm going to adjust my camera here and let you see the setup we have. And let me adjust the card a little bit, maybe slide it a little bit closer for you all. So we have some sand here, and this is the surface we're going to use. And I'm going to add some water to it just to kind of make it clump together a little bit more. And by doing this, it's just making it so that any impression will uh, be a little bit more visible in the sand. You know, that kind of dry sand isn't going to hold a, an impression of a shoe pretty well. There we go. And let me spread this out a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay, that should work. Notice I'm just trying to keep it nice and even. All right. And I am about ready to make my impression at this point. So I'm going to just use a pair of shoes here. I don't feel like getting mine dirty. These are obviously not mine. They were a coaching gift from when I coached in Northern Virginia. And here we go. I'm going to press down just firmly. With the shoe I'm trying not to rock, I'm just pressing down. Obviously, a person would probably make an actual step in there. Okay, there's, there's some that's present there. Let me, again, adjust the camera. Take it for a little trip. So again, you can kind of see the print if you look closely. Again, the water has helped maintain some of that tread print there. All right. And now what I want to do is I'm going to actually spray some hairspray. So this is something that a forensic investigator would actually do. They would take some hairspray, spray it around a footprint or tread mark. And why do you think they might do this? If you said to help hold the print, you would be exactly right. By using that hairspray there, now we got that lovely hair, hair salon smell going on, your finest hairspray available at your local marks. It's going to help hold that print when we add our cast. It's going to be more likely to we keep it as it is and we don't damage it when we pour in our plaster. So now what we might do is place a ruler and take some photos of our print as is. And again, why do you think we might take some photos? Why do you think we would use a ruler? Well, we would use a ruler to help give us size, and we would take photos because that's going to help, again, give us a scale that we're working off of. Okay, now I think we're ready to make our cast. So we have plaster of Paris here. Uh, you can buy a 50 pound bag for pretty cheap at your local hardware store if you're interested in trying this. And we're going to add some water. It says water first. I'm just going to ballpark this. Let's add some water. Stir it around. We got some bubbles coming out. And the idea is that we're going to get this hopefully pretty smooth. And this kind of takes a while. Now, forensic scientists would probably have more of a ready mix. Uh, if it's depending on the ground, they might use dental stone, particularly if it's snow. Because this does, at least this process using plaster of Paris, does actually generate some heat when you mix it with water. Okay, mine's maybe a little too on the liquidy side. So I might need to actually pause the video and go add a little more plaster to this. Let's see, okay, it's thickening up a little bit. There we go. Again, you want like a real thicker consistency for this.
And I'm about ready to pour this on here. When I pour this on there, I want to be really gentle. In fact, I kind of want to maybe pour it onto this little stir stick I have. And why do you think I want to be careful with the plaster as I pour it on? If you said we want to make sure that we don't destroy anything, you would be correct. Okay. So here we go. Let's try some of that plaster. And I'm going to try to cover everything on here. I'm going to cover the whole impression and then around it as well. Why do you think I want to cover the whole impression? And I want to make sure I get the full tread. There we go. I got my ruler in there a little bit. Uh, shouldn't be my ruler. That's on me. And then I'm going to start to let it harden. And at this point, uh, extra plaster would go in the trash. Uh, we don't want it to solidify in our mixing cup here. And we're going to let this set for a while. After a couple minutes, normally if this was a crime scene, we might put initials and date and crime number on here. But otherwise, we're going to let this dry for a while before we move the plaster. Why do you think we want this plaster to dry? Good. If you said about it not cracking, making sure it hardened completely, that is perfect. So again, this was kind of a quick video. We're not going to see part two in this, but this is how you might take an impression or take a plaster cast of an impression at a crime scene. Make sure you read the directions for part two.